I wish John were here. Yes. I need to speak to him. And the three-eyed raven. I don't know what that means. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. As requested, this is going to be my brand theory super post. There's a lot of new theories based on stuff they're doing in season 7, but this will be a breakdown of all the big brand theories and why I think some of them are true or false. Some of them are better than others, as you can see. There's a new round of the HBO Now giveaway. All you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. And I know a lot of people are talking about the big thing that happened this morning. I will address that at the end of this, but please do not post spoilers in the comments. But there have been a lot of great brand theories since he debuted with his powers during season 6. What can he do? What are his time traveling abilities? The ambiguity of the show and the lack of more book material to clarify what he can actually do has led to some really good theories. The way the TV show is using him right now is sort of like an exposition potato. He's a potato until they need exposition. He's stuck in that wheelchair at the mercy of anybody that walks by him in the courtyard, so he can just pretend to be in a vision if he doesn't want to talk to someone. You'll notice that a lot of these theories are tied to what Brain is actually able to do with his powers, like he can see things in the past, but I think because of the way that he made Ned Stark turn his head as if he sort of heard someone speaking to him on the wind, people think that he actually can interact with people in the past. So people take it a step further and say, well, if he can influence things in the past, maybe he can be people in the past. Now, most of these I do not believe. So the idea that he's Brandon the Builder is just the idea that it's sort of this time loop that he's created because of what he did with Hodor. If he's able to affect Hodor in the past and in the present simultaneously, maybe he can also do the same thing for the wall. Maybe he's a much bigger part of the cycle of ice and fire. If he's one of the most powerful characters in the show, wouldn't it stand a reason that he would have a role in helping create one of the most powerful defenses against the White Walkers? It's a really interesting idea that I don't think that's going to pan out, and it's largely just, like I said, based on the ambiguity of the TV show. In reality, I think that there was an actual Brandon the Builder who was a King of Winter who was not Bran Stark as we see him today in the role of the Three-Eyed Raven. He was just a completely separate person who lived thousands of years ago. But this next theory is sort of a spin-off of that, Bran secretly being other people as a result of his time-traveling abilities. Bran is all of the Brands. You may have heard this idea, it's just the next logical step. Like if Bran is secretly other people, then wouldn't he be all of the brands, influencing everything in all time periods? So the only reason why I don't think that that's true is because I don't think he's Brandon the Builder. And if he's not one of the other brands, then there's no way that he could be all of the brands. But it's a great idea. It's one of those funnier crackpot theories. Some of these are more comedic than others. Some of them are actually based in reality. And there's even one that I legit think is true, even though the TV show will just kind of brush over it because it's kind of awkward, a little bit gross. But the next big one is that Bran made the Mad King go mad by whispering in his ear, trying to stop things in the past from happening. So Bran starts to learn about his abilities during season six. People are like, maybe he's the person that made the Mad King go mad. But the problem is, is that you actually show him slowly going mad over the course of his lifetime. It wasn't like he was an amazing king, cut to Robert's Rebellion, and then he just suddenly decides to blow up all of King's Landing with wildfire, so Jamie has to kill him and become the Kingslayer. He was a little bit younger than Jon Snow is right now when he was crowned king. He wasn't as young as Joffrey, but in his early years, he was actually really good. He introduced all these sweeping reforms, everybody was really happy with him, but then slowly over time he started to grow more and more paranoid, showing signs of the Targaryen madness. Started to feel like everyone was plotting against him, everyone in King's Landing was against him, so he slowly became the Mad King that you see today. This is also really messed up, but it's rumored that in his later years he was also only able to become sexually aroused after he burned someone alive. So he didn't go from zero to burn them all overnight with Bran sitting there whispering, don't burn them all, maybe you don't burn down King's Landing. The next Bran secret identity isn't quite as crazy, but it's also based on time travel abilities. The Blood Raven, or the Three-Eyed Raven, however you want to think about him on the TV show, is really an older version of Bran who's bending space and time to teach himself his abilities. So obviously I don't believe this either, because even on the TV show, even though the timeline's a little bit different from the way that time moves in the books, he implies he's been doing this for thousands of years. And like I said, I do think that people like Brandon the Builder, people of antiquity, the great figures of the Age of Heroes, 
they actually existed, lived and died thousands of years ago. And that's mostly based on George R. R. Martin talking about the Night King, who says that the mythical Night King, who was Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, actually lived and died a long time ago. So he is not the same person that we're watching on the TV show, even though the TV show has been a lot more ambiguous about that. Sort of the new spin-off crackpot version of that that I've seen is actually a pretty fantastical idea, which I don't believe, but it's interesting nonetheless, is that Bran is going to go back in time to try and stop or kill the children of the forest to prevent them from creating the Night King. Another spin on the idea of Bran using his time travel abilities to change something in the past and prevent some big catastrophe from happening. But I think the problem with this is when the Three-Eyed Raven says the ink is dry, the past has already been written, he's implying that Bran can't actually change things in the past, even though there's a tangential connection psychically with things in the past. So I don't think that any of the bad things that have happened in the past are a result of Bran making mistakes trying to change them. I don't think that Bran can physically travel to the past or even possess people's minds full-blown like he would do for Hodor. Like, I don't think that he can warg people in the past, although he can touch their minds, which obviously everybody points to the Hodor scene and says, well, if he can't affect the past, then how was he able to mess up Hodor's mind? What I think the TV show has been trying to say, and I do think that it'll be a lot clearer in the books when George R. R. Martin talks about it, is, is that Bran is psychically connected to Hodor in the past, and he's able to scramble his mind because of the proximity he's in to present-day Hodor. So Hodor in the past might have heard some whispering on the wind, like, why is somebody screaming at me to hold the door? I don't quite understand what this means. But because present-day Hodor is experiencing so much trauma in this moment, like he is freaking out here because the army of the dead is getting ready to burst through that door, and because he has people at both ends of his timeline speaking to him, it just completely scrambles his mind. So it's mostly proximity effect. But if Jon Snow were the person that were holding the door and Bran were also looking at young Jon Snow in the past, he could probably scramble his mind too. One of the other new time travel theories that's a spin-off of the idea of him going back in time and having something to do with the children of the Force creating the Night King is that Bran is secretly the Night King himself. I think the reason that this got started is largely confusion over the ambiguity of how his powers work and the idea that the actor that's playing the Night King looks relatively similar to Isaac Hempstead Wright. His face does look a little bit like his face, but I do think that this character is a completely distinct person, even though the TV show version is different from the book version, still completely different from Bran Stark. Even if he grows up to look like this person, he still can't inhabit people's minds in the past. He can only touch them. So he wouldn't be able to psychically become this person. But what I do think is going on, the theory that I do think has some basis in truth, is that because this is happening in the north, and the children of the forest were fighting a war with the First Men, they turned a First Man into the Night King, and because a lot of the First Men of the north share some DNA with the Starks of Winterfell, it's possible that the Night King of the TV show was a Stark on some level. But I don't think that he's Bran Stark, and they just want to let you know that he's his own person, he's not being controlled by Bran trying to warg into the past or anything crazy like that. And then sort of like the last funny theory that everybody's talking about now is Bran just secretly watching everyone in all time periods have sex at the same time. Hello, John. I saw you breaking your vows in that cave. You were so beautiful. Just being completely inappropriate. It completely recontextualizes that moment at the end of the first episode where he gets pushed out the window by Jamie. He was secretly peeping on them having sex. The crazy thing about this, though, is that that's actually true. Bran has all of the information. He knows everything that's happened. So technically, he has watched everybody do this. Even though it's like having a giant hard drive, you can't understand everything all at the same time. Like, you have to focus on very specific moments. So you can make the joke that the prequel series is just going to be Bran going back in time watching everybody have sex. You could probably get a lot of people to watch that show. But there's going to be so many more jokes about Bran, and the TV show, like I said, is going to be very ambiguous. There will be plot holes, but what I think is going on is that Bran is just the exposition potato. They wheel him out when they need exposition. All of the big gaps that you sense are just a result of the writers trying to create dramatic tension. So we can't tell everybody everything right away the minute we roll up to Winterfell, because then they'll have too much information too fast, so we need to draw that out. And so that just leads to plot holes, which obviously fans fill with big theories about why he's secretly doing these things. 
So if you have been reading up on leaked stuff, just please don't post that stuff in the comments. What will happen is, is there might be another bonus video Sunday before the episode drops. But congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Killian Fairley. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. While you wait for everything, click here for more footage from episode 4, and you can click here for my episode 3 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.